suggest that you have a go of this second one before I actually do it and then you could just uh, see my answers see how I work through it okay Doug, the second one And again, going to suppose x is discrete. So write down. Supposing x is discrete. Brackets is important. Okay, brackets is important because when I put the brackets it means that it's this times this plus this times this. Because it's got to be all the terms in there times the value of probability. Now I'm just going to use the summation sign. Oops, I put xi. and also that big x is supposed to be a little x not that it matters in an introductory course That bit, you can see, is the definition of expected value of x. This thing is equal to 1. Well, we need it to equal to 1 to get the result. Is it equal to 1? Yes. Why is it equal to 1? Because this says sum of probabilities. We know that sum of probabilities add to 1 if you sum the probability over all possible outcomes. Done. Notice also in doing this proof we have kind of indirectly shown that the expected value of a constant is a constant. Okay, so that's the proof of two proofs the expected value of ax plus b is equal to a times expected value of x plus b. This proof in the second one, if we did this proof, we didn't have to prove 1 because the proof of this is contained in the proof of this. Just look below here. Great. The next thing's step in terms of the proof in this series of proofs is to show that something like this, ax plus by plus c is equal to a expected value of x plus b expected value of y plus c, but that's for another time. The proof in this case um, you have to kind of see that this thing in here is a function, let's call it g, not just of x but of the random variable y. So the proof uh, is is a similar but we just have to account for the fact that this uh, function is no longer a function of one variable but of two. Okay, so I've done the main result today which is to show uh, this proof.